cracks are showing in the Chinese Communist Party as high-level political purges are followed by rumors of a coup. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. Shortly after Xi Jinping's major political rivals received death sentences, rumors began circulating wildly that Xi himself had been put under house arrest following a coup. You know what that means. It's time for another episode of the people's favorite communist soap opera, General Hostility. This time on General Hostility. In less than a month, the highest levels of the Chinese Communist Party will gather and a storm is brewing. Xi Jinping is expected to seize another term in power, defying convention and becoming not a president, not a dictator, but a presentator for life. But in the background, there's a deadly game of cat and mouse. Xi's political rivals in a clique tied to former Chinese leader Jiang Zemin are trying to take him down. Have they finally succeeded? Wow, there's a reason General Hostility is the people's favorite communist soap opera. So yes, last week, rumors started flying about a coup against Xi Jinping, that he'd been placed under house arrest. Videos began popping up of military vehicles allegedly en route to Beijing, and reports that an unusual number of flights in China had been canceled. Xi Jinping also hadn't been seen in public since he returned from a trip to Central Asia on September 16th, including missing a high-level meeting of the Central Military Commission. Add all these things up and Xi Jinping was obviously taken down in a coup, right? Now, what seems to have started as rumors reported by Chinese Twitter users were translated into English, hyped up by more Twitter accounts and Indian media websites until even Newsweek started talking about the coup rumors. Now, in some ways, the idea of a coup against Xi Jinping is not that far-fetched. There have been reports of coup attempts against Xi before. In fact, Chinese officials have been jailed for plots to overthrow Xi. Rumors always get bigger in the lead-up to a big Communist Party meeting. Remember, there is a very high-level power struggle going on within the Chinese Communist Party. It's life or death, either Xi or his enemies. However, there are major problems with these particular rumors of Xi's purge. First of all, some people are celebrating the idea of Xi Jinping getting purged. But that's a mistake. If Xi were to get taken down, some other horrible communist leader would just rise up in his place. The problem is the Chinese Communist Party itself, not any individual. If Xi got purged, that really changes nothing. And the rumors about this coup were really weird if you've been following general hostility. Here's what supposedly happened. It started with former Chinese leader Hu Jintao and Premier Wen Jiabao, who were in charge before Xi Jinping took power in 2012. While Xi was out of the country, they allegedly convinced this guy, Song Ping, who is 105 years old and the oldest living former high-ranking CCP official, to help them take down Xi Jinping. Together, they took over the Central Guard Bureau, who are the personal security guards of CCP leaders. Then they informed former leader Jiang Zemin and other members of the Central Committee that they had done this. And they all voted to strip Xi Jinping of his military command. So when Xi returned to China on September 16th, he was put under house arrest in the Zhongnanhai leadership compound. Okay, so none of this makes any sense. Who and when don't have any active beef with Xi Jinping. They're not the guys trying to take Xi down in a power struggle. If anything, they have beef with Xi's rival, Jiang Zemin, the Toad King, because he spent over a decade undermining Hu and Wen in a power struggle. There are rumors that Jiang tried to assassinate Hu. You can tell how well they all get along. One of the final things Hu did while he was in power was to take down some of Jiang's biggest henchmen, leaving the way clear for Xi Jinping. So the idea that Hu and Wen would suddenly turn around and get rid of Xi, which would help Jiang, is kind of far-fetched. 
Not to mention, this guy, Song Ping, is considered a big supporter of Hu Wen and Xi Jinping. Song spent years working with Xi's dad. Here they are on an official visit to Hawaii in 1980. Again, it's not clear why he would suddenly turn on Xi. Plus, notice how Jiang Zemin is an innocent bystander in this rumor? So what about all of the proof of the coup, like the military vehicles going to Beijing? Never trust video of unidentified military vehicles going who knows where. The reports of flight cancellations seem to be exaggerated, too. And it's true that Xi Jinping didn't appear in public for more than a week after his Central Asia trip. It's not the first time she has disappeared before a big party meeting. That happened back in 2012, when he was about to become the CCP leader. There were wild rumors about that, too. This time, she could have been in zero COVID quarantine, which is supposed to last 10 days. Personally, I like to think that he pulled a Ferris Bueller, escaped Beijing, to live out his dream of being a chef. But Xi Jinping's cooking dreams were short-lived. Because guess who showed up in public earlier this week, 11 days after he returned to China? But the timing of these coup rumors was awfully suspicious. I'll tell you more after this quick commercial break. Welcome back. So it was pretty clear early on that these coup rumors were false. Remember when there was a coup in Myanmar? That was really clear almost immediately. Well, to everyone except this aerobics instructor. But could there have been another reason for these rumors to spread? Well, let's look at what we know happened right before a major purge of Jiang Zemin allies, especially in the Public Security Bureau, which is China's police force. That's important because the PSB was a powerhouse of the Jiang faction. It's what he used to keep an iron grip on Chinese society. In fact, one of the officials purged for a real coup attempt against Xi used to be the Minister of Public Security. On September 21st, three former Public Security Bureau officials went down. One was Liu Xinyun, the former Vice Governor and Public Security Bureau Director of Shanxi Province. He was sentenced to 14 years in prison. He was also fined 1 million yuan for accepting more than 13 million yuan in bribes and abusing power. Another was Deng Hui Lin the former vice mayor and public security bureau director of Chongqing. He was sentenced to 15 years in prison and fined 4 million yuan for accepting 43 million yuan in bribes. And lastly, Gong Dao An, the former deputy mayor and public security director of Shanghai. He was sentenced to life in prison, deprived of all his political rights, and all his personal property was confiscated. But she was just working his way up the ladder. Usually, the way Xi does things is to purge lower-level officials first, so they spill the beans on their higher-ups, the more powerful enemies of Xi. That's what happened here. The next day, September 22nd, Fu Zhenghua, the former public security vice minister, justice minister, and deputy director of the Social and Legal Affairs Committee of the National Committee of the CPPCC, got a suspended death sentence. After two years, this will be commuted to life in prison with no parole. Also sentenced was Wang Li Ke, the former standing committee member of the Jiangsu Provincial Party Committee and secretary of the Jiangsu Provincial Political and Legal Affairs Commission. He also got a suspended death sentence that will become life in prison. Why will their death sentences get commuted? Well, the court said they gave up information on other serious cases. So even though all these people were being charged for corruption, it's clear this was more political than anything. Because the next day, September 23rd, she took down the big fish, the ringleader of a clique against Xi Jinping himself. This is Sun Li Jun, a former party committee member and vice minister of the Ministry of Public Security. He also got a suspended death sentence that will be commuted to life in prison. Why was his death sentence suspended? Well, apparently, he also gave up valuable information. Gee, I wonder who's next. Now, these sentences were a long time coming. For example, Soon was first investigated in April 2020. And it's not surprising that they all got sentenced right before a big Communist Party meeting. This is really big, because both Fu Zhenghua and Sun Li Jun climbed the ranks during Jiang Zemin's era of dominance. 
That was from roughly 1997 to 2012. Both of them were also trusted enough by the Jiang faction to be allowed to helm its anti-Falun Gong campaign. In 2015, Fu was head of the Supra Authority 610 office, and Sun was his deputy. The 610 office was an ultra-powerful Gestapo-like organization. Jiang Zemin created it to destroy the Falun Gong spiritual movement. It didn't destroy them as much as he'd hoped, but it wasn't for nothing. Controlling the 610 office, like the Public Security Bureau, did give Jiang and his people enormous power even after he supposedly stepped down. It would be like if after a U.S. president stepped down, he still controlled the FBI and CIA. Which sounds crazy, but it's China we're talking about here. Xi Jinping officially eliminated the 610 office a few years ago, after many years of power struggle against the Jiang faction. That being said, the 610 office still seems to be hobbling along, with some of its old missions being carried out by the police and other organizations. So last week, Xi annihilated the Sunli Jun clique, a powerful group of Jiang's allies, just weeks before the party congress. And then, ridiculous rumors of a coup against Xi Jinping started flying around. Do you see my raised eyebrow? Major things are happening in the Chinese Communist Party. If you're interested in learning more, we have a general hostility playlist, and I will be making a recap episode of all the political infighting ahead of the party congress. So stay tuned. Things are going to get very interesting. Of course, I couldn't do any of that if it weren't for support from viewers like you. YouTube demonetizes and age restricts us so much, we'd have gone out of business years ago. Most of our revenue comes from what I call the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army, the fans who support us in the fight against the Chinese Communist Party on Patreon. All it takes is a dollar or more per episode. More is always appreciated. And as a thank you, I answer their questions at the end of episodes. Today's question comes from William Cummings. Hello. Let me know if there's a better way to ask official questions as part of my membership, since I'm relatively new to Patreon. Ah, glad to make that clear, especially for new members of the 50 Cent Army. So after you sign up to support China Uncensored on Patreon, whenever I post a new video, it'll look something like this. Simply leave a question as a comment, and I'll see it. And then stay tuned for future episodes, and you might hear me answer it on the air, like your question today, William. But be sure to check back often, because many of you have told me YouTube never notifies you of new episodes, even if you're subscribed and have the notification bell turned on. And many of you have even said you've been secretly unsubscribed before. We have new episodes every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, so check back then and make sure you're still subscribed. Thanks again for joining the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army, William. And thank you for watching. I hope you join the 50 Cent Army too and join me in the fight against the CCP. I'll have a link to Patreon in the description below, or you can go to patreon.com slash China Uncensored. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.